A very good afternoon, children. Well, in today's class of English literature, we shall take the twelfth chapter from your text, that is from Skylar Course book. That is the twelfth chapter. Uh, the name of the chapter is Trees. Okay, it is a poem written by Alfred Joyce Kilmer. Now, let us try to understand who Alfred Joyce Kilmer was. Okay. Uh, the point of this poem, uh, The Trees, uh, is Alfred Joyce Kilmer, who was born in 6 December 1886, okay, and he died in July 30th or 1918. Uh, Alfred Joyce Kilmer, he was uh, an American writer and a poet, okay, mainly remembered for a short poem titled Trees, about which we are going to study today. Now this poem, The Trees, was written in the year 1913, okay, which was published in the collection Trees and the Other Poems in 1914, okay. So Alfred Joyce Kilmer was also a journalist, he was a literary critic, a lecturer and an editor. Okay, so that is uh, what our poet uh, Alfred Joyce Kilmer was. Now, uh, before we go on to study the poem, the trees, first of all, uh, a bit of, uh, you know, uh, introduction. Let's make a short introduction to the poem trees. Okay, uh, as I said just now, this poem trees was written by American poet whose name was Joyce Kilmer or Alfred Joyce Kilmer. Okay, uh, now. This poem uh, is about the beauty of the nature. All right, the poem trees is about uh, the beauty of the nature, especially the trees. All right, there are so many, uh, you know, uh, beautiful things in the nature. Right, like the sky, the earth, uh, you know, ocean. So many things are there in the nature. But this, uh, uh, in this. Uh, poem uh, he discusses specially about the beauty of the nature uh, especially the trees okay now uh, you know this po this poet trees the poet uh, wrote this poem when he happened to open the window one fine morning you know one fine morning when he happened to open the window he was charmed you know he was charmed by the beautiful trees outside his home okay so this uh, beautiful sight inspired our poet Alfred Joyce Kilmer to compose or write this poem, The Trees. Okay, uh, all right. Now, uh, see this poem, uh, it consists of, uh, you know, it consists of 12 lines. All right, this poem, uh, The Trees, consists of 12 lines, and these 12 lines consist of six couplets. Six couplets, uh, couplets here yeah, means, you know, couple. You know, it comes, this word couplet comes from the word couple. So you will see, couplet here means in a very simple language, it means pair. Okay, in simple language, couplet means what? Pair. All right, so this poem consists of 12 lines, and 12 lines consist of six couplet or a six. Uh, you know pairs all right so I will try to read this line uh, you know I will try to read this uh, pair of lines and explain you accordingly okay so uh, so couplet means what a uh, pair you know in a very simple language here couplet means a pair okay so as I said just now this uh, uh, poem consists of 12 lines okay divided into six couplets six couplet means six pairs so each couplet or each pair we will read uh, you know line by line and accordingly I'm going to explain this to you okay right now the first line or you know the first two lines of the first couplet of the poem says I think I'm going to read the poem for you I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree yes now this is the first two lines or the first couplet okay now see uh, now in this uh, first couplet or in this first two line the poet after seeing you know the, after seeing the beauty of the tree what does the poet says the poet says that he you will not be able to see okay a poem see uh, you know see here means what read a poem which is as lovely as a tree okay now the line seems to be confusing why because he is comparing the poem with the he is comparing his poem is comparing his poem with the tree 
all right okay but however if you you know if we go deep into the lines of this poem if you go deep into the lines of this poem we find that the poem uh, or the poet is comparing his creativity of composing a poem with the creativity of the god that is the creation of the god you understood what i mean to say okay now here in the first line what is the poet you know what is the poet trying to do the poet is trying to compare his creativity of composing poems creativity of composing poems means his you know talent of you know his talent of composing poems with the creativity of the god what is the creativity of the god that he is comparing his poem with the trees okay so what he what does he think he thinks that his creativity is inferior than the creativity of god okay so he thinks that his you know his talent or his uh, creativity of writing a poem is great okay he thinks so but after seeing this beautiful creation of god that is the trees after seeing this trees what does he think he thinks that you know his creation is a nothing you know his create his creation is zero in front of the creation of the god or in front of the creativity of the god that's what the poet thinks in the first couplet or the first two lines all right now now we will see the second uh, the second couplet or the second two lines okay now look at the second two lines or the second couplet here the poet says a tree whose hunger mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast okay now in the second couplet or in the second two lines the poet has personified the earth okay now what does this mean that according to him according to the poet like a mother feed milk to her children you know when a mother you know when a mother uh, makes the baby lie down on her on her lap and feeds milk to her baby you know when according you know like that only like the mother feed milk to her children mother earth also what does mother earth do mother earth also what feeds its sweet water okay it's sweet water which flows on its breast breast here means what see when a mother you know when a, a mother feeds her child you know through her best breast isn't it like that only what does the poet saying the poet says that mother earth also just like a mother feeds uh, her baby milk you know feeds a baby a milk through her breast like that only a uh, mother earth also feeds its sweet water okay okay which flows on her breast breast means what the surface okay surface of the earth to the trees when the hungry mouth hungry mouth means what here hungry mouth means the roots is pressed or such for the food now what does this mean it means that just like a mother feeds a hungry baby you know a milk from her breast similarly the tree also uh, similarly mother earth also feeds uh, you know the tree with its sweet water or a very refreshing water when the roots you know when the roots of the trees uh, searches the water inside the earth surface okay when the when the uh, you know the water is the food of the tree isn't it so when the tree searches uh, you know for the food uh, with the help of its root in the soil so what does the mother earth do the mother earth feeds the tree with the sweet water just like a mother feeds a baby with her milk understood okay so just note here uh, here uh, you know earth symbolizes motherhood you understood okay uh, the poet is trying to compare earth with what motherhood or mother okay while the tree is acting like a child yes or no so the poet uh, you know say here the earth is compared to mother okay and the tree is compared to a small baby understood so in poet's imagination earth and the tree have a human characteristics okay in earth uh, you know the poet is imagining that uh, the earth is the mother and the tree is uh, her baby understood so in the second couplet here the poet is comparing mother earth with the mother who feeds her hungry a baby uh, with her milk 
you know from our breast like that only mother earth also feeds the tree with the sweet uh, water okay all right now let's go to the third couplet or the third two lines and the third two lines uh the third two line says a tree that looks at god all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray now here see in this couplet or in this third two lines the poet says that a tree looks at the god all the day and always lifts her you know leafy arms to pray now what is you know here what is the tree or the branches of the trees the tree and the leaves are compared to let's try to find out here the tree is given a female's characteristics okay that means a tree is treated like a woman you understood here the poet is comparing the tree with a woman okay uh, so as he you know uh, as she is referred to as the she now here the tree grows you know the tree grows upward and the poet imagines as if you know as if it is praying to god now here as i said in the in this stanza uh, the entire tree is compared to the woman woman's characteristics you understood okay like uh, earlier you see we we talked about a mother feeding a baby with the uh, with a milk through her breast like that only a tree is also uh, sorry the earth is also feeding the a tree with its uh, uh, sweet water and all that so here here in this particular stanza the poet is comparing the tree with the woman okay now what does the tree do the tree grows upward and the poet imagines as if it is praying to god you know you must have seen a tree when a tree obviously the tree grows upward no and then it has several branches like a hand Yes or no? It has uh, several branches like hands. So it it raises the 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 branches of the trees are raised up. No. So what does the poet imagines? Uh, the the poet imagines as if the tree is lifting his hand towards the god and praying. Okay. Now the leafy arms here refers to its branches and leaf. You know, leafy branch means here the branches of the trees. and the uh, you know the uh, leafy branches here refers to the branches and the leaves of the tree okay so the poet considers uh, here again what happens since the uh, you know since uh, the tree is, uh, is is imagining the tree to look up towards the sky and pray to the god so here the poet considers the tree to be uh, a religious like human being you know religious human being what did they do they raise their hand up and uh, face uh, towards the earth uh, sorry face towards the sky rather and pray to god isn't it okay so here also the tree uh, the poet is comparing the tree to a religious person or a people who raises their hand in prayer and look up to the sky uh, uh, and thank the god or pray to god all right so that's what in the that's that's all about in this uh, second third couplet now we will see the fourth couplet in the fourth couplet or in the fourth four uh, fourth four lines okay uh, what uh, uh, what uh, is the poet uh, uh, trying to tell us here then see in the fourth line i am going to read the fourth couplet uh, okay a tree that may in summer wear a nest of robins in her hair now here uh, according to the poet the tree wears okay that is you know uh, uh, that is gives space all right the nest of robins nest robins means what here robins means the, it's the name of a birds okay in her hair that is branches hair means the branches here okay robins means the what birds it's the name of the birds now what is it <clears throat> you know what is the uh, what is the poet actually trying to say here it, uh, the poet is actually trying to say say that you know uh, in summer during summer the tree gives what the tree gives shelter to the birds like robin and many and many such birds to build their nest okay to build their nest and under its leafy branch you know to build their nest under its leafy branch and protect them from extreme heat cold water dust etc okay all right so in ex in the extreme summer 
what does the what does the tree uh, what does the tree uh, do the tree gives what the, uh, the tree not only uh, gives uh, fruit and uh, fruit even you know the birds even gets food and fruits from the tree yeah not only that you know the the tree also tries to uh, protect the birds and give them shelter okay um, uh, and save them from extreme heat cold rain storm dust etc all right so this is what the fourth couplet says now the fifth couplet or the fifth two lines the fifth two lines what does the fifth two lines says upon uh, you know upon whose bosom snow has lain who's uh, intimately lives with rain all right i'm going to read this line again please see upon whose bosom snow has lain who intimately lives with rain now in this couplet or in these lines the poem uh, the poet rather again refers the tree as a female all right now according to the poet the snow lain uh, lain means what for falls okay the snow falls on the bosom bosom means the breast or the chest okay the snow falls where does the snow falls the snow falls on the chest that is okay that is uh, the leaves of the tree you know all the body of the tree according to him according to the poet what does the poet says the poet says that the snow falls on the bosom or the breast of the trees that is the leaves of the trees in fact you know moreover uh, it also lives intimately intimately means what it also lives happily who the snow okay snow the rain it lives intimately or it lives happily with the rain uh, as the latter helps to grow now the you know uh, the trees allows you know because uh, what does the tree require the tree also the tree requires water you know water as the main source to live isn't it so since this snow and water you know uh, snow provides the uh, snow rain and all provides water to the tree so what does the tree do the tree also allows the snow to uh, you know uh, rest on its branches and leaves okay why and they live uh, you know this way they live intimately with each other that means they live happily with each other so that the when the snow or the rain falls on the body of the tree or on the leaves of the tree the tree doesn't you know move and shake and tries to throw them away it allows it to stay they live it intimately closely and happily with each other because uh, even uh, you know because uh, because the tree also knows that uh, it helps you know the rain and the snow helps it to grow all right and you know uh, now the same thing uh, the same thing in another words you know we can say like humans you know just like humans the trees also face ups and downs in their lives right so they also bears the hardships like snow you understood okay human beings you know the life of human being is not safe so uh, you know not smooth rather life of the human beings doesn't sail you know smoothly all right ups and downs uh, ups and downs means what Hap uh, happiness and what Sor sorrowfulness okay Hap you know happiness and sorrow uh, is a part of life so up and down comes in human's life like that only the tree also faces ups and downs in their lives how they also bear sometimes you know sometimes they have to bear the hardship of snow isn't it okay now when the snow falls on uh, the leaves of the tree probably they might also feel very cold and hard and heavy okay that is uh, so that that particular part that the tree experiences is compared by the poet to the you know to the hardship that the human being has to go undergo rather okay and at the same time the tree also enjoys the good times like the rainy season when the rainy season comes what happens the trees uh, you know the trees be become very happy because like it's it's like you know they're bathing you know it's a it's a shower time for them okay cleaning time for them and it's very cool cooling for them all right so it, they enjoy that now this particular part uh, you know when this particular part when the tree enjoys you know uh, the rain falling upon them they, they they for trees it is the good times so 
this particular time is compared to the hardship of uh, sorry uh, the happiness the happy part of the you know happy uh, happy uh, happiness or the uh, happy part of the life of the human being it is compared so just as a human being goes up and uh, you know has an ups and downs in life like that only trees also uh, has goes undergoes ups and downs in the life that is sometimes it has to hold uh, you know cold heavy snow on uh, on top of his body and sometimes a light beautiful full rain all right okay now we will see the last uh, uh, two lines of the last uh, couplet the final couplet here what does it say is that in the final lines the in the final two lines the poet okay first let me read the line for you uh, the line says poems are made by fools like me but only god can make a tree okay now here in the final lines what is the poet uh, you know calls himself see the poet calls himself a fool okay and he says that poems are you know poems are composed by human being like me who is saying that the poet is saying okay poems are composed by human beings like uh, me and uh, you know while a uh, charming things like tree trees are charming beautiful isn't it okay poems you know poems are composed by like a foolish man like me foolish people like me but such a beautiful and charming thing like tree can only be created by who only be created by god okay so here the poet is again comparing the creativity of human being with the creativity of god okay so um, you know ultimately and then ultimately he concludes that human's creativity can never be as perfect as the god's creativity you understood human being can never compare with the what cannot be compared or human beings creativity can never be compared with the creativity of god okay so uh, human can never make you know because human can never make something like a tree we can only uh, you know watch and enjoy and have fun with them but we can never create ourselves the beautiful uh, you know thing like tree which the god has created all right so uh, in conclusion uh, what is the whole poem says then see uh, the whole poem is symbolic in which nature is personified yes or no nature is uh, personified here okay so uh, you know and its creator is appreciated who is the creator in the poem here yeah? who see here yeah, uh, as i said the poem is symbolic and in which the nature is personified you know we are talking about the trees trees is a part of nature isn't it okay so uh, uh, the nature is personified nature is uh, uh, you know uh, praised here yeah? and of course its creator is also appreciated who is the creator here yeah, the creator is god okay and another very important aspect of this poem is the uh, criticism of the human activities against nature you know see who are we to destroy nature isn't it it is not created by us trees are not created by us it is created by god therefore if it is not created by us then we do not have the right to destroy them also yes and all of you since it is created by god we are not we have we did not create trees it is not created by human being therefore we do not have the right to destroy them also understood that's what that that is how the poem criticizes the human activities that uh, human activities like felling of the trees deforestation you know we go all we do all these things okay that the, the poem also criticizes all these things bad things that the human does to the nature and the trees okay so ultimately as i said it is the god who creates the tree human being what we do human being they just cut cut it too and you know write uh, uh, you know cut the trees and write poems on the paper made out of it yes or no yes or no what does the human being do human being they cut the trees and then after that what do they do they write the poem on the paper which is made out of that same tree it is not fair isn't it okay so the poem seems to be critical of its activity you know it's it the though the you know this poem makes a lot of criticism on human activity like that we we do not uh, we do not create tree but yet we fell tree we cut down the trees and make the paper out of it and then we compose a beautiful you know we compose a poem on the beautiful tree and save tree this tree and all that we go go on telling so goody goody things about trees 
you understood okay so this is why you know he calls himself an other poet what fools this is why the person who write uh, beautiful things about tree on the piece of paper which is made out of the dead tree yes and all of you okay and the praises tree and you know just like that but that's why you know uh, the poet thinks that not only him he criticizes everyone he calls not only himself but he also calls other poet a fool okay well so uh, that's all for today uh, this is all about uh, the trees uh, the poem trees i hope you under this understood this poem uh, written by uh, alfred joyce kilmer okay well i think we're going to stop here uh, that's all for today uh, thank you very much and stay safe and stay tuned